Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I've got what I'm hoping is going to be a very elegant passenger steam locomotive from Hornby. <laughs> So I've managed it yet again, I've found a steam locomotive that I have never reviewed before and the list of those is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on but there are still one or two left. So today's locomotive is this, it is the Hornby Patriot class or more specifically the rebuilt Patriot. And this model has been in Hornby's range for quite a long time. It first appeared in their catalogue in 2007, making this a 15-year-old model, or at least the tooling dates back about that far. Except I have never tried it, which is strange. I don't really know why. But finally, we are going to change that today, and I'm going to take a look at this. Now, older models like this are absolutely fine, in my opinion. They can be a little bit less detailed because of their age, which makes them ideal for beginners or for those who aren't comfortable with very detailed and fragile locos. And because they were designed and developed so long ago, the development and tooling costs should have been covered long ago. And when you combine that with their relative simplicity as older locos, that should make them relatively inexpensive and affordable again for those beginners. But of course, because this is a Hornby locomotive and knowing what Hornby are like these days, that is not the case. So are you ready to hear what this 15 year old model now costs from Hornby? Well, the RRP is now £205.99. <laughs> yes, normally I would act surprised, but uh, that is just who Hornby are these days, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Not that bothered about you, more bothered about your money by the seams of it. So this is available from retailers for around 160 to 170 pounds. That's about the cheapest I can find it at the moment. But I bought mine at around Christmas time back in December from Kerno Model Rail Centre for, mm, what price was it? £99.99. .99. So that's better than half of the RRP now. So either at £99 when I bought this before Christmas, Hornby were making a massive loss on this. Either that or now at £205, they are making a massive profit. Well, which it is, you decide. But... As a 15-year-old model at £205 RRP now, it's difficult to know what to expect. Obviously, expectations because of that price are incredibly high. So this will have to meet the ultimate modern standards in sort of detailing, features, performance. Otherwise, I'm going to call this a rip-off. Pretty surprised I haven't done that already, but we'll give it a fair chance first. So let's take a look at this together, the Hornby Rebuilt Patriot. <coughs> rip-off. <coughs> So I've said that this model dates back around 15 years, and while usually models that date back that far do tend to be simpler than models released today, they can still be very presentable. I mean, the Hornby Q1 and the Hornby A3 or A1, those two locos were released at around the 2007 mark. And yes, they're not as detailed as a 2022 loco or whatever, they don't have quite the same features. They still look good provided the price is right. So, you know, this could be a very presentable looking loco. So I do have some hope for this being a decent model. Uh, we'll just have to see, I guess. Let me show you the end of the box then, so you can see the version I've got here. So this is R3614. It is an LMS460 locomotive, a Patriot class rebuilt in brackets. And this one is Rail. I'm probably saying that wrong, no doubt. And it is number 5521. I can at least uh, read the running number for you. And if you're interested in the class itself, if I show you the back of the box, there is a little bit of history on the thing in real life. So pause and read that if you'd like. And then you've got some of Hornby's drawings on the end of the box here. And these two are dated 2007, which corroborates the dates I found online. So yeah, this is definitely around 15 years old or thereabouts. So for the first time then, let's pull this loco out and see what it's like. I've got to say the box feels fairly heavy, so at the very least I'm expecting a decently heavy loco inside, but let's find out, shall we? All right, this is really exciting, a, a, a first, a loco I have never looked at before. So there it is, the rebuilt Patriot shrouded in packaging. So let's start getting this out. And we'll see what's inside. I can see a very hefty detail pack there, so we'll take a look at that in a second. 
First though, let's see what the instructions have to offer. So this is the Royal Scot slash Patriot operating and maintenance instructions, suggesting that perhaps they run on the same chassis. That's pretty interesting, but they are very similar in chassis in real life, so it's not too much of a surprise. So lubrication shows you how to lubricate the thing, fitting accessories and such. I guess that will be reasonably simple to find out. How to remove the body. It looks like you've got to remove the front bogey first, so that sounds nice and easy. And then you've got assembly, so connecting loco and tender, DCC and sound, so you can see there's a space for a speaker there, as well as the DCC socket. And then on the back, a little bit about the brake rods, which maybe, yep, they're included in the detail bag, so you are to fit those if you want them yourself. Okay, right, let's have a look then. Let's take a look at those accessories. Okay. So first things first, you can see that we've got cylinder drain cocks, which are still on the sprue. Couldn't have taken those out the sprue for us, folks. That is unusually lazy, isn't it? And then brake rods as described, steps, and then coupling for the front of the loco, and then a painted vacuum pipe there, as well as some screw link couplings. So yeah, not too much in there, I suppose. And obviously the reason the cylinder drain cocks won't have been fitted to the model is because they sit somewhere near the front bogey. And on tighter curves, the front bogey could actually collide with them. So you probably only want to fit those if you've got broader curves, but it's up to you, you could try. Right, let's open this pack and let's have our first look at the Loco and its finish. All right, so oh, that doesn't look bad. You know, that looks all right. Usually Hornby Locos are a little bit plasticky looking, and uh, you know, this isn't the highest quality finish I've ever seen, but it certainly looks better than I was expecting. There is definitely a bit of a, a sheen going on there. And this is a nice livery, by the way. It's in the LMS black, which has some lining on it. So, yeah, it's not just your simple black either. So, yeah, looking forward to this. Okay, let's lift up this model. And wow, yes, there is definitely quite a bit of weight there in the loco specifically. So there it is. It looks like a really handsome model, I have to say. The weight is good, but clearly the running plate is just made of plastic. In fact, all of the bodywork seems to be, barring some of the details, obviously which means there must be a very, very heavy chassis in there to make this weigh as much as it does. So yeah, I still think this will be a good puller, definitely. And it looks great. It looks really handsome, doesn't it, actually? So I'm glad about that. Yeah, it's a decent looking loco, at least from a distance. So in a second, we're gonna take a much closer look at this and we'll inspect some of the details. But for now, let's have a potted history of the Patriots and the rebuilt Patriots in real life. The rebuilt Patriot design surfaced for the first time in 1946 when the first of seven of 52 LMS Patriot locomotives was rebuilt with an improved Stania boiler, tender and also cab. The original Patriot design dated back to 1930, back in Henry Fowler's day, when the class was first introduced. The original design was largely borrowed from the Royal Scot, plus the boiler from the Large Clawton class, I believe, which led to their nickname Baby Scots. The first two examples of original Patriots were actually rebuilt from the former Clawton locomotives, followed by a further 40 rebuilds, which interestingly means that only 10 of the 52 Patriots that eventually existed were actually built from scratch as new build Patriots. By 1960, the Patriots gave way to newer locomotive designs, as is the case with all steam locos, and by 1965, every example had been withdrawn. All Patriot locomotives were scrapped, including all of the rebuilt examples, so no original Patriots survive today. That said, a new build Patriot locomotive named the Unknown Warrior is in the works and it's due to be completed any time, as I understand it. The project has been delayed a number of times over the last few years, but hopefully it will be with us before too long. So there she is up close and personal for you, the Hornby Rebuilt Patriot class. And I've got to say I'm pleasantly surprised. In many ways, this Loco is much, much better than I expected it to be. As you can see, the quality of the finish is high. That is legitimately a good quality finish. Better, in fact, than quite a lot of what Hornby have produced much more recently. Really good looking finish. 
And as we're going to see, the level of detail is also really, really impressive. Great fidelity in the moulding, lots of separately fitted parts, and the fidelity of the separately fitted parts is really good as well, to the point where it's more or less at the same or a similar level to what Hornby are producing today. It's not worth £200, but I mean, that's obvious, isn't it? But decent compared with other Hornby Locos. The only issue with this model is, as is quite usually the case, the quality. This is a poor quality model, unfortunately. The first culprit is the plastic running plate. Obviously, that is not a feature you'd expect to see on a £200 Loco. There's no reason at all why Hornby could not have redeveloped this to have a die-cast running plate for that amount of money. However, it's not the weight that suffers as a result of the plastic running plate because the Loco is pretty heavy at 371 grams, which is exactly the same as the Hornby Royal Scott, and it's even more, in fact, than the Backman Patriot class at 346 grams. So the weight isn't a problem. However, the warping is. If I hold my steel rule up to the running plate, you can see that at the front there, it does bow downwards, and as a result, the cylinders don't fit straight either. Obviously, that is completely unacceptable on a model of this price, and this is very, very common from Hornby. It's very rare to see a die-cast running plate on a Hornby Loco, and so this is a problem I've seen countless times before. And for that, there is no excuse. Hornby must be aware of this, and obviously they're okay with it, because they haven't done anything about it. You've got some details which are just not very well designed. I mean, there's this pipe, for instance, which just leads to nowhere, and it's loose. And it also looks as though the chaps at the factory had a bit of a super glue party, because wherever you look on the model, chances are you can see bits of super glue visible. So that includes around the chimney. There are smears of it on the boiler here and there. And quite a lot of the separately fitted parts also have visible glue around them. I mean, what has happened here around the reverser rod? So, frankly, the sooner that Hornby realise that they are not producing locos worthy of £200 and that everybody else is aware of that except for them, it seems, the better it will be. But, as I say, the level of detail on this loco is generally very, very good. The decoration can't really be faulted. If we look at the banding on the boiler, it's very, very precise, as is usually the case from Hornby. Looks absolutely wonderful. And the same is true of the decoration on the side of the cab. Very elegant looking LMS lining there, accompanied by the running number and the classification, which is a 6P on this loco. The warped plastic running plate is, however, nicely decorated, as you can see, with similar lining, and so are the cylinders. Beautiful lining on those. And then you've got quite a few separately fitted detailings which are painted as well, such as the pipework beneath the cab. You've got the mechanical lubricators around the smoke box area, which are painted gold, and also the nicely painted buffer beams, which do have the separately fitted metal buffers which are also sprung. Yeah, sprung buffers, that's a good feature. And while we're looking at the buffer beams, you can see we do have the separately fitted screw link couplings fitted from the factory. Not only included, but actually fitted to the loco. How many modern Hornby locos don't have that feature? Quite a lot of them. Here's another nice feature as well. We've got the plates here, the name plate with the little crest above it. That is a separately fitted etched piece as well. So that is a very good quality feature and the decoration is certainly high quality as well. So let's take a look at some of the other details. We've got realistic looking coupling and connecting rods. I think, I don't know if that back wheel looks a bit on the wonk, doesn't it? Hopefully we haven't got, yeah, look at that. How much slop in there. <laughs> Well, that will come when we look at the mechanism, but uh, yeah, that's a bit of a concern, isn't it? But yeah, all the rods and the valve gear, that all looks nice and fine, which is good. We have a separately fitted metal reverser rod. I do like it when we've got separately fitted metal parts because they have a better finish and they're also better quality. They're less flimsy, for instance, when they're made of metal like that, so that's decent. And then you've got quite a lot of different moulded details along the boiler, including the pipework and also the wire handrails, which look great as well. And on the front of the smoke box, you've got a fully separately fitted smoke box dart. Little bit wonky that, but not too bad, as well as more handrails and such. And then up on top of the loco, we've got, I think that's just a plastic whistle. Looks a little bit flaccid, doesn't it? They're pointing downwards a bit, but it is a fine part. The safety valves, though, the finish and the difference in the finish there is quite striking. Yeah, they do look much better quality than the whistle. The wheels themselves are all right. You don't have the properly moulded centres. You've just got visible axles which have been blacked out, so at least they don't catch the eye, but they're not quite as realistic as on a more modern Hornby Loco. 
and the front bogey wheels appear to be a little bit better actually because they appear to have the sort of lathe holes cut into the axles. Those do look better than the main driving wheels. The fact that quite a lot of this fine pipe work has been modelled is quite impressive. Again, you know, 15 years old, quite surprising to see that level of detail on the model. So that's good. And it has got one or two flashy features even, such as the opening intake on top of the cab, which is a nice and smooth motion. And it seems to be sort of fitted properly, which is a, a nice bonus. And then around the cab itself, you can see we've got glazed windows, which have been separately fitted. Cab doors, which are factory fitted, that's quite nice. You have a tender full plate, which is you know, not quite making it to the tender. We haven't got dreadfully close coupling here, at least not out of the box. Uh, but it's quite a nice feature to see, the tender full plate. And the cab detail itself is okay. There are some impressive aspects of it. I mean, the gauges that have been picked out, they're pretty good. But other parts of it, the regulator, for instance, and the water gauges, yeah, they're not quite as impressive as they are on more modern locos. But the fact that we've got some painted cab detail in there is quite impressive, I think. So overall, the loco looks really, really good. The tender is probably one that I've looked at before on a different loco, but we will take a close look at this. So the decoration is similarly good. As you can see, all of the lining and the lettering looks absolutely fine. The underframe is relatively basic with just molded details there, and obviously it doesn't have the brake rigging fitted out of the box. So looks a little bit basic down there, but I guess it would look a little better with the rigging fitted. In the top, you've got a removable coal load, which looks all right. Yeah, nice, fine looking coal, I think. Minimal detail in the front of the tender, nothing's painted there, but it, it does the job, I think it looks all right. The tender has a fair few separately fitted wire handrails, which I think look good. And then around the back, you've got the small printed details, the LMS uh, plate there, and also the water capacity of the tender and such. Although the lamp irons and everything here are just a part of the molding, they are not separately fitted. And that could be the case on the low coat as well. They could be molded, but at least they stand out a little bit more there. And then the rear buffer beam is a little bit simpler because it doesn't have the screw link coupling pre-fitted because that would interfere with the NEM coupling on the back. But it is included with the model if you decide to fit it. But it does have the sprung buffers, of course, as you might expect. So overall, poor quality lets this down. The glue marks are a real shame and obviously they are just completely not befitting of a £205 locomotive. For £99, that's the price I paid in the sale, absolutely fine. If these were still available for that price, then this would be a wonderful bargain. But at the more typical retailer price of, you know, £160-odd, pounds, it's just far too expensive for what this is. It's the same story with basically every other Hornby locomotive in their range currently. But the finish and the level of detail, very, very good, much better than I was expecting. And they have earned this loco a very good detail score, as we'll see later on. For now though, let's get this down onto the track. We'll have a look at the mechanism and we'll try the performance for the first time. I believe this should have the same chassis as the Royal Scott, so the performance ought to be similar, but is it? We'll have to find out. Let's get started. So there she is, the Hornby Patriot class down onto the track. And I've got to say, yeah, the quality of the finish on this Loco does make a big difference. It just looks like a better model as a result of that. And I have done the performance test. I won't give anything about that away right now, but it's filmed and you will see that in just a second. Now though, I want to talk a little bit about the mechanism. Now, obviously the innards of this locomotive are not befitting of its RRP of over 200 pounds. I think that's fairly obvious because of how ridiculous that price is. The mechanism though is competent, there's just enough there to make this a decent runner, but it is very, very bare bones, it is very light on features, so of course there are no LEDs, no lights, no lamps, no firebox flicker, no pre-fitted speakers, no smoke generator, no bells and whistles like that. Things that you would expect at over £200, but nevertheless haven't been included. But the basics are there, like I say, so most of the Loco's wheels have pickups. That includes the tender wheels. As you can see, every tender wheel has a copper pickup going to it, which is a good quality feature. And the Loco driving wheels also all have pickups on them too. So pickups is a massive tick. The Loco to tender drawbar coupling is basic, right? It's just the metal bar that is screwing Loco and tender together, and then you've got that wire going across them. 
It's not an elegant solution, but it is a robust solution and it is easy to couple and uncouple the two if you need to do that for maintenance purposes. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely fine, not a huge problem. The base keeper plate though is not so good. It is hardwired, unfortunately, to the Loco chassis, which means you cannot remove the pickup plate for cleaning the pickups or cleaning or lubricating the axles. So access is a real problem there. That is quite a big no-no. Some spring-loaded coupling contacts would have made a massive, massive improvement there. And this Loco should have that at over 200 pounds RRP. I was able to see though that there was a single driven axle on this Loco, which is fine. And there are proper bearings on the driving wheels. Now, contrary to what the instructions suggested, the body removal is quite a lot simpler. There is no need to remove the front bogey. You just sort of push it out the way slightly. It can stay put. And then you just uh, undo the front body screw there and the loco comes off quite easily. So loco body removal is quite easy. So that aspect of the access is pretty good. As you can see, nice tidy chassis here. There is some electrical tape on the motor, but that just keeps the wire in the right place. This is a five pole motor according to Hornby's website. And it looks like the standard motor that is in most of Hornby's locos of this size. Notice though there is no flywheel, which again is another quite glaring omission for a loco at this price. The DCC socket is inside the tender, which you can easily access by removing just one screw from the underside of the tender, so that's no problem at all. And as you can see, there's plenty of space there for a decoder and also a speaker, if that's what you want to do. The gauge was okay as well, a little bit under the standard at 14.1 to 14.2 millimeters back to back, but that is about standard for Hornby Locos and that generally doesn't cause too much of a problem. So with that out of the way, it's a decent mechanism, but a few extras would have really helped to justify the frankly ludicrous price now. Anyway, it's time to show you what happened during that performance test. Okay, first performance test then. So at the very least, we know that the model has been well lubricated because I've spent much of the review so far dabbing patches of oil off the bodywork. So I'm guessing that factory lubrication now involves putting the thing in a booth and then spraying oil at the model, then maybe using an old rag just to dab off the excess. So it ought to run well at the very least because there's lots of oil there. Or alternatively, there is oil everywhere but on the mechanism, in which case the loco will not run well. I don't know, but it's time to find out which is true. So, set this to forwards and let's find out first, does the model work? Here we go. Yep, seems to, and that was a glorious start, wasn't it? Really nice, gentle acceleration. Let's see how 50% speed looks. That's 50 so it doesn't seem too fast, doesn't seem too slow. Speed seems very sensible. Yeah, I reckon this is going to be a good runner. Yeah, really very good. Uh, it looked as though the crawl was going to be good when it first started, but how is it truly out of the box? I'm just turning it up real slow. Oh. There we go. Look at that. So that is a pretty darn excellent crawl. That is more control than you could possibly feasibly need on an express passenger loco. So that's awesome. Let's try it backwards. Is there a lot of slop in the... No, it's not too bad, actually. No, those rear wheels started turning at a sort of the same time as the rest of them. So I guess that's okay. And bear in mind, this has not been run in yet. And already it's running fairly smoothly. Oh. Bit of a jerk there that was probably me uh, the medium speeds yeah it's reasonably smooth isn't it it's not bad let's try and go sort of semi crawl a little bit faster because I, I thought it did bind up a second ago that sort of speed there we go hand off the controller yeah i think that's it's not bad actually is it it's fairly consistent oh Right, so yeah, it's not perfectly balanced then. It does seem to speed up and slow down a little bit. But it doesn't seem to affect the crawl too much. So yeah, I don't know. It's not been running yet, so we won't draw any conclusions just yet. So far though, it looks all right. Yeah, it looks perfectly acceptable. So let's get this going off around the layout. Let's see how it holds the track. I suspect this is exactly the same chassis as the Royal Scott, so it should be fine, but we need to confirm that. So here we go, 50. So it's definitely a lively model, isn't it? I mean, that's a good healthy speed at 50%. It seems to be getting faster already, I would say. 
but the crawl is still really, really good. So that suggests a good quality motor. Yeah, I reckon that five pole motor must be a good one, which affords this Loco top performance at all speeds, it seems, and that is without running the Loco in. So performance looks like a massive thumbs up. No slowing down, no cutting out or anything like that. Seems absolutely top notch, just exactly as you'd want it. So that's really good. I mean, this Loco is looking decent, isn't it? So, I'll continue the running in, it will get 30 minutes in each direction and then we'll come back and do some more testing and hopefully the performance will be as good after the running in, if not even slightly better. Okay folks, I am back and running in has completed. Overall, it's a really, really nice runner, I'm super impressed. It has gotten faster as it's run in, it is quite speedy now, but I don't think quite as fast as the Royal Scott was, if you remember the Royal Scott, which has basically the same chassis, that thing was really fast and it affected the torque. This thing doesn't seem to be quite as bad. I did slow it down a little bit and tried it around my second radius and sure, it does slow down a little bit, but not as much as I remember the Royal Scott doing. The pulling power even seems to be slightly better than the Royal Scott, even though the Loco weighs the same. So 0.42 newtons this time, which translates to around 26 coaches. The figure I got for Royal Scott was only 24. So it must be just a different motor. Maybe the motor that ended up in this Loco was by chance better. Maybe there's something in the tolerances about it. Maybe it's just more efficient somehow, but this is a better runner, definitely. So let's see what the performance is like now. Is it still nice and smooth? Yeah, it seems reasonably smooth. I mean, it's not 100% perfect in the rotation, but I think it's pretty close. Yeah, I mean, that is not bad. It's good and quiet as well. Yeah, no nasty noise or anything like that. And of course, how is the crawl? Let's get it into the middle and see. How's the control? Oh yeah, it's really good. So the performance is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's definitely a top quality performer, that's for sure, look at that. And let's accelerate from there. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. So performance is beautiful. And for the haulage test, I have set up, I don't know how many, I think it's seven LMS coaches. So I think that ought to be a good test. And of course it will be interesting to see if this thing slows down a lot uh, around those curves with those coaches coupled. So let's go and see, let's go couple. All right, so I'm hoping to be able to do this nice and controlled. Let's slow down, uh, I see. That's the trouble with the really good crawlers. I slow down too soon. <laughs> right, never mind. Okay, are we in focus? Sort of, right. Forwards we go then, and I think we'll go a bit slower this time. We'll try to, I don't know, 35, 40, uh, just to sort of amplify the torque issues if they're there. So there we are, we'll go for 40. Yep, that looks sensible. Yeah, I'd say that's about the speed I would usually run a loco at. We'll catch up with that in a minute then. I've decided to run some other 460 tender locos for you today, although there is one odd one out in the sidings. So see if you can spot which that one is and comment down below. I'll pin the first comment that gets it right. Uh, this is of course the Backman Patriot, which I've remoted with a cordless motor. Overall, this is a better model, I would say. Some aspects of the detail aren't quite as good. I mean, does the, yeah, oh yeah, the, the air intake opens. It's not got such a good cab. It does, however, have the die cast running plate, although mechanically much poorer. So again, it's hard to say which is best, but visually, I think Backman has definitely beaten Hornby, that's for sure. Anyway, off it goes. That's got some Pullmans. And then on the inside line, we have the Hornby Royal Scott, which is definitely faster. Oh, blimey. Although I think it is exactly the same chassis. I don't. Maybe they've changed the gearing in the Scott or the Patriot, I don't know. But that thing is definitely a lot quicker. Anyway, off it goes. I'll have to slow that one down a bit as well. Okay, let's see then. At the sensible speed, have we got any slowing down? Oh, barely, barely, almost unnoticeably. And with quite a big train, that's quite impressive. So the difference there between this and the Royal Scott, given how almost identical they are, is shocking and very, very noticeable, isn't it? 
So overall, a fantastic loco, really, really good. The level of detail is excellent, much better than expected. And although the model is simple in terms of the features it has on offer, the performance, the raw performance itself, is absolutely great. Really nice smooth runner, as you can see, decent pulling power, nice crawl. Yeah, what more could you ask for? It's, just, it's super reliable because it's got all of those pickups. So it's, it's a damn good loco overall, I would say. Clearly, it is not worth £200. I think at the price I paid, which was £99.99 .99 from Kerno, that was definitely the right price. If you can find one at that sort of price or anywhere close to that sort of price, then this is fine. This is a good purchase. That is the right price for this loco. At £200, at more than double that, then yeah, the quality problems, the missing features, they start to become a problem. And as usual, Hornby's latest RRPs are completely unrepresentative of the models that they actually produce and they misleadingly suggest that the models are actually more or better than they really are. And as you can very quickly see under a close inspection, that is not the case. So be careful, don't overpay for this loco, but if you can find it for the right price, it's a top purchase. Really good loco. And now for my ratings then on the lovely Hornby Patriot. The level of detail I've actually given five star because this loco was really quite impressive. The decoration, first of all, fantastic, lots of lovely lining and the finish looked really good as well. Nice satin finish on this, quite a lot better looking than some of Hornby's other locos. Loads of separately fitted parts, including the metal reversing rod and the metal safety valves. Those are nice quality features. You've got screw link couplings, which is quite a rare feature. Sprung buffers, of course. The cab, I think we've seen slightly better cabs, but still painted gauges, not a bad cab. Really nice level of detail there, five star. Performance is also really, really decent because of that good quality five pole motor. The crawl on this model is fantastic. Really, really good crawl. Great range of speeds. It does go a little bit speedy at the half speeds, but not to the point where it's affected the crawl. Perhaps the torque could be very slightly better. It does slow down a tiny bit on the second radius curves, but not enough for me to deduct anything from the score there. So perhaps that's slightly generous, but I do think five star is deserved there. Very nice, smooth performer. Pulling power then, quite a lot better than the Royal Scott, even though they have a, basically the same chassis and the same weight. Don't know if this model happened to get a better motor. I don't know, but this is a better puller at 26 coaches or 0.42 newtons. That is pretty good, I think, for a loco of this size. Mechanism, though, is when this model starts to fall down a little bit because, first of all, very poor accessibility to the axles and pickups, which makes maintenance quite annoying. There's also no flywheel on that motor, which would have been a really nice thing to see. However, there is a lot of pickups, which is great. Good quality motor, proper bearings on the axles, and at least you've got easy access to the motor and the DCC socket, if not the axles and such. The quality then, again, has had to lose a couple of marks. The plastic warped running plate is just inexcusable, particularly given the new and much higher price. Just absolutely no excuses for that at all. And visible glue on multiple different details. Again, that sort of sloppy toy grade quality is not acceptable at this price point. However, the finish is much better than we've seen in the past, and the fit of most of the details is good and straight as well, so not terrible quality, and the quality of the mechanism is fairly good as well, so it doesn't get a terrible quality score. Value for money, though, is where this loco really falls down. Now, the new RRP of £205.99 is just ridiculous, as evidenced by the fact that I was able to buy this model miraculously for £99.99 .99 just a few months ago, which demonstrates quite clearly that that new price is not necessary. And same really with the current price at the retailers, £160 to £170. Some might be more, some might be a little less. It's just silly for a model this old and this basic in areas. Give us lights, give us a die cast running plate, improve the quality, get rid of the glue, and maybe we can talk about this being more like a £200 loco. As it is though, forget about it. Ridiculous value, one star. Overall then, that is 6.8 out of 10. Unfortunately, the value category has really spoilt it for this loco because without that, it would get a decent score. But as it is into the ranking, it goes. There it is, 11th place below my Gladstone and above their 060 Sentinel. Now really, is this loco worse than Gladstone? Well, no, it's a better quality loco than Gladstone, of course, with more detail. But then again, Gladstone was built properly, there was no glue visible on my loco, and it cost £25. So it's a little bit easier to overlook its shortcomings, I think. 
oh well, not a bad loco at all, but don't spend 150 to 200 pounds on it because it's just not worth it. So thank you very, very much for watching, folks. I do hope you enjoyed this review. If you've got any thoughts on the Hornby Patriots, do comment them down below and let me know. Have I been too harsh? Have I not been harsh enough? Of course, this is just my opinion, so if you disagree, let me know and we'll discuss it. I love doing that. But that's all I have to say for now, so thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed this one. Yeah, lovely loco. Uh, pretty decent overall. Oh, I love that finish. It's really great. All right, I'll let you go. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching.